Batman Caper Series, Season 1, Episode 2, Title, and Be a Villain. And this episode is really well put together. I mean, there's only one criticism I have with the episode. Maybe because I saw the episode the one time. If, if I watched it again, it'll be like, boom, there it is. But the only criticism I have is motivation. Motivation with our villain. And this is the Clayface episode. And... Clayface's, like, motivation started to make sense and then it became unclear and then they tried to do the whole thing of, like, well, we believe this is his motivation why he's doing the stuff he's doing in this episode. But, yeah, it's, it's the complete opposite. I just go, what? Okay. Like, this episode had a good, has a good, like, setup. That there's a Hollywood starlet, uh, or a Gotham starlet, and someone has kidnapped her. And there's no notes, nothing, there's no no clues whatsoever, and Vance Victoria is the one who's on the case. And she's interviewing everyone who's part of, of her movies, of her crew, and trying to figure out where is she, where, where, where is this actress. And... It all links to Clayface. And Clayface in this is very a mush of like the modern version of Clayface with maybe the more like cl classic version of Clayface. It won't be classic like Golden Age version of Clayface because there's been like five Clayfaces around. And the one that everybody knows is the big blob of clay, like the big muddy monster guy, that version of Clayface. But, way at the beginning, Clayface was just a guy who was able to change his face. You know, he's able to morph his face. And it's more, in this episode, it's more heading towards that aspect of things. And it, I was like really digging this. And I like Vitoya. I like how motivated she is, how serious she is. Uh, she's clearly on the, the, the fence of the... Like, it, you know what, the thing about normally when we tell a story about the early years, the Batman's early years, maybe not year one or year two, but maybe like year three, you know, Ventoya is very by the book. And is like, you are a critical Batman, I need to take you in. And then slowly she's like, oh, Batman's allies, he's one of the good guys. And blah, blah, blah. So it takes a while for her to settle things up. But you also have, but with Victoria, you have also a sense with what she is around her peers. That, like, just by Harvey Dent talking about, well, I'm going to be mayor. I'm going to be Gotham's new mayor. So you better want to change the attitude there, sweet cheeks. You just go, oh my God. And she's easy, like, Harvey, I know you don't care about your, about your campaign, but you should. Because I might, because you want me, you want me on your good side, don't you? I, it's weird. Like it's Harvey Dent, and I normally with Harvey Dent, anytime we talk about sides and goods and sides and equals and twice and Harvey Two Face, I just go aha ha ha. Remember, you get it because he's going to become Two Two Face. Oh, yeah, good job. But it it works. It works because it shows that this version of Harvey. Is one mean son of a bitch. This is a, a, a son, guy who's just, he's not the bright Nia Gotham. This is a guy who's very up. He's very snotty. You're very surprised that Bruce Wayne is friends with this guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, the only, but, you know, I like the mystery, I like the interviewing, I like the. the the, try to piece things together, even though you know who he is, but try to piece together the motivation. The motivation of Clayface. And I'm like, okay, so the motivation is that he is into an actress who kind of gave him some motivation about, like, hey, if you had uh, a better face, you would get leading roles. You're that talented, but it's just you were born with a face that screams villain, villain, villain. And so, he goes to a surgeon, a surgeon adjusts him to something, 
makes him have the, the big clay, you know, the clay able to move his face into things. And and then he gets rejected and then he's he kidnaps her. And the problem is that is okay. I had to start questioning then why did he start killing his 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 crew? Is it just because? Is it because people were easily fired now? Like why is he, you know, killing off his cat and why is he killing off his crew just for the hell of it? Because that's, that's a more interesting question, because at the end he's like, oh, I, you know, I can be a villain, I can always be a villain. I, you know, he has this actress in a death track, like something from a 1930s horror film, which is, let's be honest, this is a little more 1930s Batman world. Like, you know, it's like the old computer here and there, but it's more clearly set in like the 1930s or more timely kind of. Um, Gotham, but I start questioning when it comes to Clayface. It's just like his motivations are slightly everywhere. Um, but the deaths in this episode, it's brutal. Just left to hear a guy, just because. I'm like, okay. But even though I like the episode, it's just like. Yeah, I kind of wish the motivation was more focused, clear. We're like, okay, he's doing it because of this. He's doing this because of that. He's doing this because of X. And and stick by it. Not like, hey, well, I just want to be a villain. So I'm going to be a villain in real life. Because my face looks like mush now. It looks like a massive mess right now. I just... I just... Yeah, that's the only complaint I have. But I like it, Toya. Uh, wait, and the ending is a bit off. I was like, really? That's how you end the episode? Okay. But, yeah, but Toya is really... I, I like this version of the character. I, I really do. But, but Toya is always a character I like. So, you know, one, one of the good cops of the GCPD. Not Harvey. <laughs> it's not Harvey Bullet this time. And so, yeah. Anyway, comment below what you thought of this episode.